Hey everyone, my name is Matt Heim and these next videos are going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process how to edit and deliver 360 degree content, uh, both video and spatial audio. All right, so the first step in our process here is to take our raw footage that in this case we've captured with the uh, Ryko Theta S 360 camera and we're going to import it into our software so that it can be stitched together uh, to be uh, 360 degrees. Because now if you look at our footage, uh, you can see what it looks like raw, which is not very 360 or immersive. So uh, we're going to want to change that by dragging our footage into the software that is available for free off Ryko's website. And it's going to ask me here where I want to put my video. And um, that's fine. And I do want top and bottom correction so that it stitches out directly below. Uh, and, and uh, directly above the video. So I'm going to hit start and it's going to start converting which it can definitely take some time uh, especially if your video is long. Alright, stitching has completed and we have in front of us the Capital University Philomel which is an all acapella vocal group. They're very talented and uh, as you can see I have uh, 360 control over where I'm looking at all times by moving my arrow keys on my keyboard. I can look up and of course I can look down and uh, left and right as well. So if I hit play here, you can see them in action. They begin to sing. And now that we have our footage stitched together, we can move on to our next step which is editing and coloring in Adobe Premiere Pro. And it's here that I'm going to trim and edit my video footage so that I'm left with just the range that I want in my final video. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to trim just the video content. I'm not actually going to touch the audio. And that's because later on when I go to Pro Tools, I'm going to want that audio for a sync reference because I did capture my spatial audio separately um, as it was not uh, hooked up directly to the 360 camera at the time of recording. So what I'd like to do first is take my footage that I've imported and drag it over to the timeline. And you can see we see it in the viewer over here. And notice that we're not seeing the 360 feed that we saw in the Ryko software. We're actually seeing what's called an equitangular view, which basically means you don't have to use your arrow keys to move around. You see everything in one frame. So if I hit play, uh, we can see we're going to... Uh, hear the audio and kind of everyone's kind of getting ready to start the song so that's something I'm not going to want in my video but again I do want to keep that audio for a sync reference later on when I go to Pro Tools. So to trim just the video I'm going to uh, right click on my footage here and, and uh, select unlink so that unlinks the video from the audio. So now I can just uh, trim the footage and you can see the audio kind of dips down there. Let me zoom in Everyone gets real quiet right before the song starts. So I'm going to want my footage to probably fade in right about there. Um, and I'll leave my audio alone. Uh, quickly, let's go to the end. And let's see what we got here. Got the end of the song. And I'm going to have a fade out right about there. So I don't need anything here. And the audio here doesn't matter because I'm not going to let the video keep going there. Uh, OK, so now we go back to the top. And we're going to want to add a transition. And to do that, there are a couple different ways you can get to transitions, but I like to go here. We find video transitions. We go to the dissolve, and it's cross dissolve. So drag that in right there. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right, so now when we play it, we have a nice fade in right there. And we're going to do the same thing at the end of the video so that we can fade out. There we go. Nice fade. Perfect. So now that we did that, uh, we are going to move on to color. So basically, we have to cool down this image a little bit. It's a little orange, just yellowish, um, and we want to bring that more to a blue cool area. So we're going to do that, and we're also going to add some contrast to help it look a little more cinematic. So if I take my temperature and just kind of slide it this way a bit, and again, I'm just kind of doing this on the fly. Um, I like to play with this sometimes, see what happens. And I think I'll maybe add a little bit of that. Exposure looks fine. Let's add some contrast. Yeah. Um, 
that's fine. Shadows. Maybe darken the shadows a bit. Whites look good. And the blacks probably down a bit. Cool. All right, so that's a pretty quick color job there. Um, let's see what it looks before and after. Oh, yeah, so you can see kind of faded there, a little more crisp and uh, vibrant there. Uh, so that's our color, and now we're going to go ahead and render our changes. All right, our final step in Premiere is to export our media. And to do that, uh, the shortcut is Command-M. And we're going to want, uh, for a format, we're going to want H.264. And match source is great. Uh, you can name your file here, which I will name... And choose where to save that. And uh, everything else is pretty good. Um, you can kind of dig in more if you wish, but uh, uh, the key setting you have to select is if you scroll down in the video tab, uh, VR is video. You gotta check that box. Uh, and that opens another option uh, with a frame layout. Uh, in this case, we want monoscopic because that is the type of footage that was shot with the Ryko camera. And with that, we can go ahead and hit export. 